Welcome to the Monday, June 20th, 2022 meeting of the Montpelier Design and Review Committee. I will let committee members and staff introduce themselves. Eric Gilbertson, member. Benjamin Cheney, member. Mike Miller, staff. Stephen Everett, member. Martha Smirsky, member. Liz Pritchett, member. Meredith Crandall, staff, remotely. Okay, good. So either Meredith or Mike, would somebody like to review the re remote meeting procedures? Yep, so I'll be doing that. Let me just share my screen. And some of this is more for, um, oh, what just happened here? Hold on, I have too many screen share options. There we go. Okay, so can everybody see the slideshow? Yeah. Yes. Okay, great. Um, so for those viewing this meeting via Orca Media, um, you can participate in tonight's design review committee meeting via the Zoom platform. You can use this link here. Um, you can also call into the meeting using this phone number and this meeting ID. I'll leave this up. Um, and if anyone is having problems accessing the meeting, please email me. Here's my email address. I'll have the email up throughout the meeting. Um, right now, we just have JC on, our applicant. Um, so for those attending via Zoom, just note that turning on your video is optional. We do ask that you keep your um, microphone on mute when you're not speaking. This will reduce background noise, make for a better recording for our um, minute secretary. And a reminder to use the Zoom chat function only for technical difficulties. Um, any, if somebody logs on from partway through, um, who's on ORCA right now watching this, if you have substantive questions, we ask that you raise your hand um, and wait till the chair calls on you and then you can ask those questions. Um, in the event that the meeting is unable, some, somebody from the public is unable to access this meeting, it will need to be continued to a time and place certain, and I'll be keeping an eye on my email throughout the meeting, just in case that happens. All right. I'm going to hand this back over to the chair. Thank you, Meredith. And unless anybody has anything to add at this point, do I hear a motion to approve the agenda? So moved, says there. All second. All in favor of the agenda, speak your names. Martha. Eric. Ben. Steve. Liz. Okay, the agenda is approved. We can go to the first application for 118 Barry Street. Owner applicant, J.C. Earl. Would you like to describe your project for us? You're gonna need to unmute yourself, J.C. Yeah, sorry about that. So, uh, yes, um, I hope you were able to view the um the documents that i sent in and um if you're familiar with the building or saw the documents um it's in a pretty serious state of disrepair so uh this is uh the first stage and basically is triage to to try to save the building um from ending up in barry street um so anyways it's just the basics of uh the roof is in a state of failure um so the roofs pretty much all need to be replaced um and uh the foundation is in a state of failure on one corner um and uh the windows are either broken missing or not there um so from a historical perspective uh the basic structure is is uh, got a, a historic shape and obviously will be preserved. Um, none of the windows in the building currently are historic. They're all uh, fairly modern replacement windows. Um, the foundation is a fieldstone foundation that's fa in failure, but um, that uh, I have I have searched far and wide and I cannot find anybody that is willing to. Um, repair a uh, historic foundation like that with historic 
methods or means. So the, the best I can come up with is, is to remove a section and, and uh, repair it with concrete. And the roof is uh, sort of similar. It's, um, you know, sort of a, a, the, the steeper roof is an aged out asphalt shingle and the, uh, the flatter roofs are a bizarre combination of metal and, and um, membrane. And um, we're proposing replacing it with a rubber membrane, which is really the, the only roof that, that, uh, that operates well at that pitch or lack of pitch. So it's sort of, uh, you know, uh, save, save it, save the, save the building mission. I am curious because the, um, where, where, uh, one question I have is that, uh, the fire marshals do not consider the, the only way to make the window openings that are there a legal egress windows, if they are being replaced is to replace them with a, um, the one of the ones that are in the cut sheet, which is the kind that swing out. And I was curious, uh, you know, how that, how that works with, uh, you know, the DRC and, uh, you know, the historical things, because obviously those are not swing out windows are not a historical look, the single where I can use the single hung style will very much match the historical style of what at least what's there and probably you know might have been a nice six over six pane originally or something but uh you know um those are long gone um and no remnants of them but anyways just curious uh what uh how that plays out the 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 egress windows versus the historical design needs first Where are you going to place I'm sorry. the egress windows the Sorry, I couldn't hear the question. Eric, can you get close to your microphone? Where are you going to, where are the casement windows going to be and where are the double hung windows going to be? So the, the good news is that uh, there's only one uh, bedroom that does face uh, 18 Berry Street, um, but that bedroom legally by fire marshal standards would require an egress, one of those windows to be egress windows. Those are would be on the front portion of the, of the building facing the um you know above the above the porch so that's the only window that would be a visible uh you know difference in not a not a single hung style that matches the double hung the other ones would be um in the back and and not only visible from you know if you were walking behind the building how many units are in the building there's three units in the building one up one up one down or two up one down or v v vice versa so if you look at the, the photo of the I, I hope it's clear the whole photo of the sort of facade the part that's on the western side is sort of a was probably the original structure and it has more of a gable end uh facing uh berry street right that section is a two-bedroom apartment that is a first floor and second floor and uh yeah there you go and the in the that's a so that whole section is one apart one two bedroom apartment and then on the right hand side, those are one bedroom apartments first floor and second floor are their own apartments. Okay. And the number of units will stay the same, JC. You know, no change to the units, no change to the layout, no change to the, just uh, just and and you can see the, in this photo the one of those two windows by by fire standards would need to be an egress window. And the openings are not large enough to make them an egress window with a double hung style. I'm looking at the picture of the second floor from the east side of the building, where mm -hmm. it shows the the upper floor porch. If you yes. look at if you look at that porch on the second floor where that bedroom is, if you were to go back into that corner above where the stairs go down is there any chance of putting a doorway in there that could come out to that porch that would satisfy an egress uh there's the that it doesn't connect to that bedroom unfortunately there's a there's a um the stairway for the that apartment mimics that so that's there's no um there's no direct access to that porch area but that was next that is an excellent idea 
I was just wondering if it was if that was an acceptable means of egress so that you could actually egress onto that porch and down the stairs as opposed to egressing out of a window onto a porch roof. I mean, if, if it could be accessed, uh, if if the stairway didn't go through there. So if you're looking at that picture on the exterior, the stair on the interior yes. uh, that goes from the first floor to the second floor mimics the, the stair that is on the exterior. Okay. So there's so no uh, easy, there's yes. no space there that would, it doesn't adjoin, that porch doesn't adjoin the bedroom, even okay. though it looks like it does because of the cavity for the your headroom and stuff. Okay, no, I, I was just a curiosity question. And also yeah. looking at that picture and then the picture of the west side of the section of the building with the gable roof, would that have asphalt shingles on it and then membrane only on the low pitch sections? Yes, so the asphalt would go on to the 12-12 pitch roofs you're seeing there on either side. Okay. And that one and that one. And then the uh, membrane would only be used on the uh, porch roofs and the flat roof. Okay. That is correct. Can you get the casement window with a divider so it, it would look like a double hung? I, I can ask if they, that's, a, that's an option and definitely order it that way if that's an option. They, they can they yeah. can they can can apply a surface mutton which gives the appearance of a double hung window. Sure. Right. Yeah. Right. I, I have seen that and I'm sure I'm sure that you know I just uh, I, you know I'll have to confirm but yes it should be possible. Do you have and, someone lined up to do the work, JC? Ha ha ha. That's uh, yes I have uh, people but that's uh, you know. There, we'll see if they're what their availability is like, and you know when I can get them in and things. There's, uh, it's a as if you probably know, it's a very competitive market to try to get workers right now. Mm -hmm. I, w I would suggest that you get uh, the casement window and put it in both those second floor windows with a divider, so that they match. So That's from the, the street, it looks like it. It would look like a double hung window. You're far enough from the street that nobody's going to get a close up look at it. But, and I would match the windows so they're not different. Just put That's the same window idea. in yeah, both. Sure. There's no reason we can't do two of the same that have the same mullion so they match. In a, in addition to the Pella 250 casement, there's also showing in in the application a Pella 250 series single hung. Why would you? Use a single hung instead of a double hung. The single hung are uh, significantly more energy efficient than the double hung. Um, their air uh, flow penetration is much lower, and um, and they're uh, they're significantly more cost effective. And unfortunately, the my experience of the double hungs is um, it's just more it's more movements and mechanisms to to fail, and the they actually look almost in. You, from from outside, you can't tell the difference between a single and the do double hung. The look is the same. They're, they're just a higher performance window. And would they be replaced almost everywhere, or are there certain sections where the double hung would be replaced with a single? Uh, th there are a few windows in the building that are functional, um, and uh, anything that's that's currently functional and not, uh, you know, what I would leave until it until at the end of its useful life. But I would say that uh, seventy percent of the windows are broken or or failed in some state of uh, of non-operation. How many windows are you replacing? There will probably be, uh, I have to do a final count. I think there's going to be about eight windows that are, that are, that are replaced. Eight to nine. I got to go through again real carefully and count the, the, um, the, they get the final exact number. 
are most of the windows one over ones, one pane of glass over one pane of glass? I see there's one that's got, it looks like a two over one. Yes, uh, yeah, uh, that's the only two over one there, and I don't know, as you can see, I, I don't know if it's clear from the photo, but basically it looks like the, the bottom sash there doesn't actually even fit. Um, I think that they just jury, you know, found the sash somewhere and threw it in there. So uh, m everything else is, is one over one. Okay. I like Eric's idea of having the two front windows match. Yep, that's very doable. And a good, good idea. Anybody have any other comments, questions, suggestions? I'm glad you're replacing the roof. I think that's about the worst one I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's pretty, uh, I don't know if I've seen a worse one in Montpelier. <laughs> it's pretty much in, in a complete state of failure. It has been, looks like it has been for a long time. I would say there's some chance that roofing is historic, but it shouldn't be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, keep coming. I wish there was a, you know, another option, but um, asphalt shingle is not my favorite roofing material, but between um, the way it would slide onto the membrane roof, if it was something like standing seam or something else, it, it doesn't, uh, unfortunately, asphalt is the, is the practical solution, even though it's not my favorite roofing material. Does it leak really badly? There are spots that are leaking badly, but uh, surprisingly, that uh, that uh, jury rigged and uh, ridiculous roof is, is actually holding out more water than it has any right to. <laughs> Well, you are saving the building by fixing the roof. Oh yeah, it, it, it's not long for this world if that roof doesn't get 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 fixed, and it's uh, you know not quite as apparent uh, is eminent, but the uh, foundation issue is um, significant as well. I don't think the foundation, <clears throat> you know, will be very visible from from the road, just the way it it is. It is on the western beyond the northwestern corner is where it's failed. But um, just the angle of the way it sits up on that uh, little rise, I don't think it will have a significant visual impact. I'm just writing here. Basically, your recommendation about the casement windows. And Eric, were you recommending putting two of those in so they matched? Yeah, they match, and yeah. with a some kind of a divider. A horizontal so, divider that can be yeah, applied to right. match the so, double hung so windows. It generally, looks like the other windows. Yeah, I've seen them like that. So I'll go through the criteria for all projects, exterior design and materials of new construction or alterations of existing buildings shall be consistent 
and compatible with the characteristics of the existing building or other properties in the district. Uh, the removal of historic materials or alteration of features and spaces that characterize an historic property shall be avoided where possible. Character defining features, finishes, and construction techniques or examples of craftsmanship that characterize an historic building shall be preserved. Deteriorated character defining features shall be repaired rather than replaced. In this case, some of those windows are beyond repair. Where the severity of deterioration requires a replacement of a character defining feature, the new feature shall be replaced in kind. Any treatments that cause damage to historic materials, including but not limited to chemical or physical treatments such as sandblasting, shall not be approved. This application is acceptable. Existing buildings shall be recognized as a physical record of their time, place, and use. Any new development shall be differentiated from the old, but shall respect and be compatible with the massing, size, scale, architectural features, detailing and overall character of the primary historic building and nearby historic properties, acceptable. Location and appearance of all utilities, mechanical equipment, trash storage, and fencing shall be cited to minimize adverse visual impact or adequately and appropriately screened from public view. Acceptable. Architectural features, including but not limited to cornices, windows, shutters, fan lights, and tablature, trim, and other forms of molding or character-defining detailing prevailing on the existing building shall be considered in the alteration of a building. Architectural features on an addition shall not duplicate but shall respect the original historic building's architectural features acceptable. Roof drainage systems shall not hide or obscure architectural def character-defining features and shall run adjacent to building corners when possible, acceptable. And lastly, windows and doors on historic structures. Character defining windows and door patterns, placement sizes, proportions, and original features, such as trim, sash, and moldings, shall be preserved to the extent possible. When preservation is not possible, such character defining windows and doors must be re rehabilitated or replaced in kind. Windows and doors that are not character defining may be replaced, but such replacements must be compatible with the historic building style, materials, and architectural features acceptable. And then the recommendations regarding the egress windows. It's recommended that the casement windows needed for egress on the second floor front side of the west portion of the building have a horizontal mountain installed to visually replicate the double hung windows on the remainder of the building. Also both windows to be replaced to match. All in favor of the application, speak your names. Eric. Ben. Martha. Steve. Yes. Lynn. Application is approved five to nothing. Um, so JC, yes. the form that Steve's filling out that has mm -hmm. the recommendation, um, I will send you a scan of that. I'll email that to you because we'll need Great. your sign off on that before we can go forward with issuing the permit. Does that work? Okay, sure. Wonderful. Thank Great. you very much for your time. I appreciate all your help. Thank you and best of luck with your project. Thank you very much. Yeah. Has everyone had a chance to take a look at the minutes from the June 6th meeting? Yes, and I'll make a motion to accept them the way they are. Second. All in favor of the minutes, speak your names. Eric. Ben. Martha. Yes. And Steve. Minutes are approved. Does anyone have any other business at this time? The, the only thing I would like to say, I guess, is that, well, Steve, you were there. We held a public hearing on the draft uh, uh, guidelines for the Design Review Committee. We had, what, Merit, is about 10 or 12 people? Something like that? Uh, yeah, about eight. Eight. Eight, And nine. Uh, we got positive comments, and Merit has gotten at least one positive comment through email. So uh, that... I would have liked to see more people there. I hope they're not waiting in the weeds 
uh, to, to come out at some other critical point, but uh, uh, that seemed to be moving forward. I appreciate people on the uh, design review commenting on it. And Steve, thank you for your attendance and comments. You're welcome. Anybody have anything else to add? Or I, do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. All second. <laughs> All in favor of adjournment, speak your names. Martha. Yeah. Eric, of course. Steve. So meeting is adjourned. Thank you all for coming.